Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Dynamic Tools D024301. This is the one inch drive detachable head ratchet. At this one inch drive, if I didn't just mention that, although apparently they only have one handle for that, for this, but maybe in the future they'll have different length handles. It's really the purpose of having interchangeable handles on these ratchets. This is a promotional product. I do appreciate Gray Tools Canada. They've come out with a secondary brand called Dynamic Tools which they're really trying to focus on the United States or U.S. market. And they're, the parent company is G-R-A-Y, Gray Tools Canada. But since G-R-E-Y, Gray's pneumatic tools, have already kind of got some market penetration in the United States, they decided to try to come up with a brand called Dynamic. So even though Dynamic may not sound that premium, it's actually from a halfway respectable tool manufacturer. Anyway... As far as the size of this ratchet, and I do appreciate them sending it to me, the crux of the video is it's $135 for a swing paw inch drive 30 tooth ratchet. And overall, I think it's a reasonable price. It's a reasonable price for the quality ratchet. Yes, I would like to have seen a better mechanism, but then the ratchet would have been significantly more expensive. Of course, repeat myself, <laughs> should mention that even Mac tools uses a swing pawl design on their one inch interchangeable handle ratchet the mac tools is reasonably priced for uh coming from mac but still 245 dollars so this is nearly half the price for base all nearly the same quality another brand say right tools they have a big long three and a half foot long handle 42 inch handle railroad inch drive ratchet and that's like 380 dollars so quite frankly i'm actually not disappointed for the 135 bucks i think it is uh, pretty good fit and finish. Anyway, we have a pretty decent size 27 millimeter or 1 and a 16th inch handle. Overall length of the ratchet itself is uh, about 26 inches from the head to the tip of the handle, or about 25 inches from the center line of the anvil to the tip of the handle. It's about 63 centimeters. It is pretty heavy. It is a solid steel handle. One thing I do appreciate is they don't use a ball detent. They use a pin detent, which locks in. So you have a press button. So when you put this, this uh, handle in there, once it locks in, it's not going to slip or fall off. Another thing I'll give them credit for is on the anvil, we can see that it has not one, but two ball bearings, which offers just a little bit better retention. If we take mo almost all inch drive sockets actually have through holes, even if they're the non-impact style. And if we put this on here, this is a pretty heavy socket. This is a right two and a quarter inch socket. It will hold the really the heaviest of sockets. And they're not going to fall off. Unless you're really trying to make them fall off. I'm actually pretty happy. I wouldn't say that this is snap-on level detent, but it's certainly pretty stout. We have a Sunex three and a half inch impact socket here, which is definitely a pretty stout socket. And pretty heavy. And I can shake that around quite a bit. And even this big old three and a half inch socket isn't just gonna fall off on the unit. And just for your information around four and a half inches is about the largest size the inch drive goes to then you step up to one and a half inch drive an inch drive is just the largest heavy duty drive size you know and working on class eight semi trucks railroads all sorts of heavy industry this is just the uh, standard on heavy duty tools the anvil would be rated up to 2,000 foot pounds of torque Many inch drive impact wrenches go up to 2,500, which is one and a quarter tons of torque, or even one and a 3,000 foot pounds, one and a half tons of torque. It's really surprising how high it inch drive can go. But I primarily have it because I've built up quite the, the collection of inch drive sockets, is when there's really recalcitrant, really stuck bolts, this is just a small 7 8 fastener, but many times, you know, people will be working on, say, axle nuts on front-wheel drive passenger vehicles. And if you're from the Rust Belt, sometimes those things can be really stuck. 
even uh, can be difficult for a three quarter inch drive. So that's why I have it because inch drive really is the big heavy duty drive size and it's the largest that's really standardized. Even though there is inch and a half, two inch, two and a half inch, even all the way up to three and a half inch drive. And yes, there's really is three and a half inch drive sockets and impact wrenches. The impact wrench would be the Ingersoll Rand 599, which belts out, you know, some huge, like 80, 40,000 foot pounds of torque or 80,000 foot pounds of torque, something just insane. Anyway, enough blabbing about uh, drive sizes. It does have a pretty decent sound. It does have being just uh, an inch drive, it does have pretty big springs in it. Even though it's a swing pawl, there is a pretty definitive action for the switch. Since the components are large enough, rather than having uh, a an extra screw hole in the bottom plate to hold the switch, which is often in uh, swing pawl type ratchets, which is a design that Proto popularized like nearly a century ago. Uh, they actually have a torque screw that screws the lever onto the internal piece, so this is actually pretty decent. This is just a stamped steel piece, but it at least is reasonably heavy duty, slightly recessed, and runs flat against the ratchet body. We can actually see this back portion of the ratchet's higher than the switch, so you're really not likely, even if you drop this, to cause damage to the reverse lever. I'd say the anvil tightness, I think it's fine it could be a little bit tighter but uh for an inch drive i suppose it's okay and they did chrome plate the bottom plate and my other impetus was to even get this ratchet or request it is the only other inch drive i had was a a very old tecton when tecton first started out they were a real no-name tool brand and 10 years ago people wouldn't have known that uh the people running Tecton were actually determined to have a respectable tool company and to have a good warranty and keep it around. But many, many years ago, when I bought this round head inch drive ratchet, uh, that's why it was cheap, but I knew that's what I was getting into. As we can see, the beam is much thinner than it is on this uh, dynamic tools, this gray tools. The beam is only 22 millimeters or something. And it's just a cheesy round head. This was actually just their three-quarter inch ratchet where they just replaced the anvil with one that was machined to inch drive. It actually had a really horrible amount of play where I had to add a whole stack of extra washers in there just to reduce the amount of play. So the only inch drive ratchet I had was a one that operated, but it was a pretty darn low quality unit. So I definitely wanted something better. And so it kind of got two birds with one stone both upgrading to a better build quality ratchet as well as going to a pair head upgrading from this round head. Anyway, we'll finish off. I know I spent 10 minutes talking about a pair head ratchet, but I'm still pretty stoked when I get some of these tools because they're, you know, I've been collecting tools for 25 years and, you know, this is my first pair head inch drive ratchet. One, I've only ever seen a couple of these in existence. Um, either on tool trucks once many years ago at a pawn shop, but they wanted several hundred dollars for it there. Gray could put some more lube in there, that's for sure. It is just a traditional swing paw, pretty deep teeth, being only a 30 tooth. I would have liked to see twin tooth paws in there just to really ensure uh, any chance against slipping. Mainly because it is an inch drive ratchet and people are going to be putting big old cheater bars on the handle and really putting a huge amount of force. So it would have been nice to see, instead of just basic plates, to have seen at least double tooth paws in there. That would have been nice and for them to have uh, added a bit of lube, which I'll go and fix up now. Being more budget oriented, there is no uh, kind of O-rings or seals. I will give them credit that is like a 3 16 thick bottom plate. That is a pretty stout bottom plate in there. So, and the other kind of neat thing about having a detachable handle is once you've broken the fastener, at least reasonably loose, uh, you can just pop out the handle and then you can use just the ratchet head as like a, you can just use it as a stubby ratchet. 
to finish running out the fastener and you're not having to swing around the big old long handle and all its extra weight. And I actually kind of like that. It's one of my more favorite features of ratchets that do this, any kind of ratchet with a detachable handle, is just the fact that it is easy to remove it and use it as a stubby just to run out fasteners. Pretty thick walls here, so I'm not... To tell you the truth, you know, you'd have to test to determine whether it would be the pawls slipping or the walls of this uh, breaking under extreme loads. Graze does not advertise what the torque rating of this is, but I would expect it to at least take a thousand foot pounds. Come on, it's an inch drive. You're not going to be working on laptop computers and cell phones with it. And I guess the only the last comment is I would like to see a lot more aggressive knurling. These are going to be used in real dirty environments and a lot of grease. And it would be nice just to have uh, just a more aggressive knurling so less likely to slip. Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been uh, supporting the channel. And please subscribe. See you next time.